Uh, we see the Russian stock market weakening. Uh, we see a, a new, uh, this is a big one, but the, the Russians uh, have, of course, um, most of the, the assets that were taken from the oligarchs after Putin took the power, after Yel, uh, Yeltsin gave them to the, to the Jews, uh, Putin took many of them back and gave them to the upper elite Jews, meaning Rothschild moved in and took uh, control over many of these assets. Uh, so he still plays both sides of the fence, and I still speaks out of both sides of his mouth. And I'm, I've never been convinced that he's not a, a key player in the in the top of this pyramid. But uh, and and I still hold to that uh, opinion that he he is involved at, at the top uh, level. But you know, one of the things I talked to you about a few weeks ago when we talked was that Russia's Gazprom, uh, you know, was doing a major major gas deal with Israel. Um, to, to take the gas that should belong to the Palestinians off their coast, but the Israelis are going to steal it from them, and they're going to sell it directly into the gas prompt system. So you, one has to wonder, with these kind of deals, knowing how tied gas prom is into the Russian uh, hierarchy, uh, what is going on here, you know, and, and what kind of deals are being made in, in smoky back rooms. This is CII. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to another installment of the French Connection. My name is Daryl Bradford Smith. Great to have you here again for uh, this most important of broadcasts. Today's date is the, is the 6th of September. It is a Saturday. It's 2008 is our year. And uh, I want to thank uh, the CII group for uh, coming in to do our engineering today for this, um, this broadcast. I know there is a, there is a holiday period on uh, Ramadan, and uh, I appreciate the efforts everyone is making at CII for helping me to get this broadcast uh, put out worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of uh, news for everybody. Um, the statistics from my website, over 148 countries, uh, people from 148 countries have visited my website in the last two weeks. And uh, so that means that this message is getting out in every corner of our globe, regardless of location. People are learning the facts. Uh, we have been talking about um, who is running things and who have, has been running things for generations on our planet. This, this uh, information that we share on this broadcast, The French Connection, uh, is about how to um, understand what really is going on in the geopolitical realm of our Earth. You know, what they tell you on your news broadcast on mainstream television is never, and I, I repeat, never the full story and often a complete fabrication. Uh, there, is, uh, there are reasons why the people who run this planet want to keep you from the facts. Much of it has to do with greed. Much of it has to do with uh, political control. Much of it has to do with uh, generational um, uh, fleecing or raping of the public's purse. That is to say, uh, we have been victimized uh, in the West as well as the rest of the world, the, the developing world, uh, for generations by a mafia. And uh, it is not a mafia in the sense of La, La Cosa Nostra uh, from Sicily or Palermo, Italy, but rather a mafia that has developed uh, over the last few hundred years using great, powerful banking fortunes to ensconce uh, a very important people to these, this group into positions of power worldwide. Uh, from their positions of power, they have used their influence and their control uh, to, to foment wars, uh, to commit genocide, to steal natural resources, to, uh, to undermine legitimately elected governments, um, to install uh, criminal regimes that end up uh, uh, violently... Uh, taking over their public's uh, lifestyles. In other words, for example, the entire idea of communism that has been inflicted upon the world came from this group. And ultimately, it was, it was them themselves that ran the communist regime in, in both Russia and Eastern Europe and continue to push communism around the world. Uh, and they are still in control of many parts of that, that world. In other words, Russia has never relinquished uh, the yoke or, or, or jettisoned the yoke of this criminal gang. We've got uh, Yeltsin having come in after uh, the, the, uh, the perestroika period, and of course uh, Yeltsin was just a, a, a 
front man for the fleecing of the Russian purse, stealing of their their uh, natural resources right out from underneath the public's uh, nose. And then it was handed over to a KGB man who uh, all of you know as, uh, as Mr. Vladimir Putin. But the fact was this man came out of nowhere. He would never have been allowed to be installed were he not in the control of certain powerful Russian Jewish interest groups, such as the uh, Russian National Congress, the Russian Jewish Congress, I should say, or the Jewish Russian Congress. I'm not sure which word comes first. The fact is, is it's very little difference between the way that happens and the uh, the European Jewish Committee for uh, for control over Europe or the uh, American Jewish Committee. How these groups run our governments from behind the scenes. I have a guest today. Uh, he is a uh, um, a Russian, uh, and he is living outside the country. He uh, he is um, well uh, studied on these on these events. He has been uh, on top of the events of of the recent past in the uh, southern Caucasus regions, all the way through um, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, all the way through over to Georgia, to Armenia, uh, and English Shetia. In fact. Um, he is a, quite an interesting guy. His name is Islander Hasim, and uh, and I want to bring him up right now. Are you with me, Islander? Are you with me, sir? Yes, hello. Yes. It's great to have you here with me. Um, I've known you as Alex uh, Alexander, and but you are you are a Muslim, and, and yes, my name? Muslim name is Iskander. Iskander, Iskander Hasim. Hasim. Right. Well, you know. Um, one of the things I would like to start talking to you about today uh, is the present conditions in the Southern Caucasus regions, uh, because uh, immediately upon the the, um, the dissolution of the Soviet Union, many of these regions had very bad blood between what had happened out of Moscow and, and those regions, and they tried to assert their independence, and many of them succeeded. But what I what I see having happened is those, those governments that succeeded in breaking away were in most instances controlled by the same criminals that everyone was trying to get away from. A uh, good example is Georgia. When you take a look at uh, the people running Georgia, the very same criminal gang uh, that was running Russia before the breakup of the Soviet Union. Am I correct in, in making that uh, statement? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> to be honest with you, it is quite difficult to stay completely independent in present time. Uh, so, in the case with the Georgia, uh, they tried to be independent from Russia because for the past several hundred years, uh, Russia played, I would say, not really good role in the, in the relations uh, and uh, their attitude uh, was like a big brother. They tried to control, they tried to dominate, basically. And what's happened, uh, Georgia tried to escape from, from this dominance of Russia, but unfortunately they can't stay independent. So the, the second uh, most powerful uh, regime on this planet is the United States. So obviously they link themselves heavily to the United States and Israel. So, so that's what's, what's happened, basically. But yeah, but the, um, interesting. Sorry? You know, one of the things, that, uh, Islanda, that I'd like to bring up, though, is the fact that we have actual uh, uh, Israelis in the government structure of Georgia, uh, oh yes, uh, yes. Jakob Shavashkashvili and uh, and of course <clears throat> their 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 interior minister was Jewish uh, from Israel. My point it's is this that that um, both uh, both Russia and uh, Georgia are are heavily controlled at, at this very moment by Jewish interests. Yes, what I believe uh, the Jews normally they <clears throat> penetrate all possible uh, areas and they create two groups basically which is fighting with each other on the surface but in yes. reality they are controlling all these all this two fighting groups Yes, we, remember we talked about this privately I, I gave you the term Hegelian dialectic mm -hmm, Yes Well that, that is, is a concept that I'd like the listeners to try and understand you see, when we look at America, for example, with the Republicans uh, arguing with the Democrats, the fact of the matter is, is just 
under the surface, these two groups are not against each other, but in fact working together. What we see is throughout the world, they set up the opposition so that they're in control of both sides of every argument. Am I correct? Uh, I think so. For example, one of the uh, disturbing information which I have got, that uh, <clears throat> the confrontation, there is a confrontation between the two Jewish groups and Ashkenazi and uh, Eastern Sephardi. And, for example, they use a Hitler like a puppet and uh, they formed the Soviet Communist Party. Uh, yeah, the Ashkenazi used a Hitler like a puppet uh, in the Nazi party, and Eastern Sephardi Jews, they formed a Soviet, Soviet Communist Party. So basically, the same people created one of the great conflicts on the surface of the earth. Well, so, so basically what you're saying is the money people behind present-day Russia and Vladimir Putin, for the most part, are, are still, can, can still be rooted back to Jewish money and Jewish interests, uh, well, you, mentioned, you mentioned to me today, interesting, I, I'm just bringing this up, the mayor of Moscow is, 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 is Jewish, as, as well as uh, Medvedev is Jewish. I mean, we've got people across Russia. Give, give the people a couple of, uh, an idea of Mr. Medvedev's uh, background. Well, uh, Putin is Jew Jewish himself, actually. And, uh, for example, uh, in one of the interviews of uh, Abramovich, uh, millionaire, uh, Jewish Russian millionaire who lives in, in London now and he's, uh, well, on the surface, he's an enemy of the Putin. Uh, yeah, he said that in one of his interviews for the newspaper, Kommersant, in 2005, he said that Putin could get Israeli citizenship as an ethnic Jew, and his mother was a Jew, and uh, his mother's surname is Shalomova. Uh, so the new president, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, but according to the Jewish archives, uh, his real name is Menachem Romovich Mendel. And so his, his name is Mendel, name, yes, yes, Mendel, that's right. Yes, and his father's name is Aaron Abramovich uh, Mendel. Uh, and his uh, president, Medvedev Mendel, uh, wife, she's Jews as well, Svetlana Moiseevna Linnik. Uh, uh, Boris Lushkov, he, but they position in themselves um, as a Christians. So you could see often uh, on the TV screen, they... Um, they, um, uh, their presence in the uh, Orthodox Christian Church. Can I stop you for a minute? Because there's another very important concept for the for the listeners to understand, and that is called crypto Judaism. Mm -hmm. And what we have across the the Western world is a Jewish uh, people who uh, play make believe in the in the public that they're Christians. A good example would be John Kerry, uh, the man who ran for president in the United States. His uh, his name is actually. John Forbes Kerry, and he is a, his last name is Khan. Uh, and uh, Madeleine Albright uh, is a very British-sounding name, Albright, but she's Jewish. Uh, General Wesley Clark, you'll remember him from the war in Serbia and and uh, and Bosnia uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, he was he's also Jewish. Um, in other words, we've got crypto uh, Jews across the world making believe they're Christians. Mr. J uh, Nicholas Sarkozy. Uh, is Jewish. His father, his grandfather, was one of the most prominent Jews in the world, and uh, he makes believe he's Christian. So this is not a new tactic, is it, um, Ishtar? But on the other hand, uh, in the case of um, uh, Boris Lushkov, the mayor of, uh, of Moscow uh, city, he's trying to to uh, to destroy the image of crypto Jews because he participating, he started participating in the uh, Jewish holidays, basically. His real uh, name is Katz. And Lushkov, uh, he used uh, uh, the surname of his first uh, wife. So, for example, you could see uh, his presence on the celebration dedicated to the Jewish festival of Hanukkah. And um, he was uh, uh, um, uh, of Rabin Berel Lazar, the chief rabbi of Russia. He lit the first candles in a big Hanukkah me menorah sets on Manesh Square, and yep. the next day you could see him uh, praying in, in Orthodox Church. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is yeah. very, well, very unusual, I would say. This is the new step, I suppose, uh, in the uh, creating the image, uh, <clears throat> the image of uh, participating in the main uh, in the main um, uh, religious activities. Now, how many how many Russians are aware of this? I know in America the uh, the people uh, that are aware of crypto Jews running the country uh, from behind the scenes is very few. Uh, the, the press, of course, in the United States and in Europe is completely controlled by uh, Zionist criminal interests. Is it the same thing in Russia? The, the press. No, never... no. Russia has a long history of of of. Uh of uh, problems with Jews, basically, and I think that quite a lot of Russians knows that the uh, revolution in 1917 uh, was made by Jews people, and uh, I think I would say maybe 60, 70 percent of Russian population knew what is going on. But on the other hand, they just stay calm and they don't want to change anything, basically, nothing. That is very sad because uh, essentially they they are. If you take a look at history, uh, Stalin had the same kind of controllers in his life. His wife was Jewish, and he had very powerful interests helping support him, including uh, Roosevelt over in the United States and uh, Churchill, uh, helping him to to remain in power. And he starved and murdered people in the in the Southern Caucasus regions and through uh, and through um, the Ukraine area. 30, 40 million people starved to death at his hands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we're talking millions of murders uh, at, at, by his decisions. The, the fact is, is, is that if the Russian uh, population does not come to this truth and do something about it, they're going to become victims, just like the, the, the earlier Russians did. Am I correct? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, Russian population, most of them are uh, Orthodox Christians, and there's a very strong idea implanted to them to be a victim, basically. So they like to be victimized, they like to be a victim. That's, I suppose, one of the big uh, problems uh, in, within Rus with the Russians. Well, now, we're, we're taking a look, you know, in the West, uh, in, in, throughout the, the last month, uh, since the uh, the Georgian troops uh, went into Ossetia and uh, and began indiscriminate killing of uh, of the South Ossetians, um, that was, seems to me to have been planned. And I'll I'll tell you why I think that. And maybe you can comment. Um, the Russian response was immediate. They had massive numbers of troops ready to to come in immediately. In other words, the Russians knew this was going to happen. Oh yes, knew, indeed. And, and they also knew, the, the Americans knew they were going to do it because it was set up by Israeli uh, special forces and Americans. So everything seemed to be uh, almost like a theater act. It was almost like, a, like the thing was completely orchestrated, including the response from Russia. And it made it, made it look to the, to the Europeans and to the Asian continent that America was evil and criminal, and to the oh, European uh, and to the um, American audience, it made it look like Russia was evil. But the fact was, it was made for public consumption, this whole thing, it seemed like. Am I correct to say that this was like a big theater act? Uh, I think so. I think you're quite correct, because uh, in reality, uh, Assetians, they, uh, the head of Assetians, he's a, a general of FSB, the successor of KGB, and they've got extremely strong links to Moscow, to Kremlin, and they provoked uh, Georgians quite a lot, basically. I mean, there was a, quite a lot of nearly everyday military provocation, so the Georgians tried to stop this, and they mm, attacked Hinvali, the the capital of mm, of Ossetia. But the Russian troops were already there, basically. So yeah. they attacked Georgia, and the war mm, has happened just few few days, and it's like a surgical um, operation in the on the theater. Yeah, it is. Mm, it is well orchestrated. It's not a spontaneous event. It is really exactly. very well orchestrated. Exactly and right. And you know what, what we're taking a look at now is that there are other regions close by, like, and and you can maybe speak to this better than anyone. Ingushetia, of course, to the to the west of Georgia, 
uh, had a war with the Russian forces, and of course there's been terrible murder and, and genocide in some instances of populations in that region, and anybody trying to speak out about the facts regarding the uh, murder of so many citizens, uh, civilians in English Etia, uh have been actually killed since. There have been more murders. They're, they're continuing to do that. Am I correct in saying that? Well, in that conflict, uh, Russian forces slaughtered uh, around 100,000 civilians. And yes. that's according to the Russian sources. And uh, Clinton lent Yeltsin $11 billion to finance this operation. Yep. And Clinton uh, even went to Moscow and lauded Yeltsin, uh, likened Russian savage repression of tiny Chechnya, uh, uh, to tiny Chechnya, Chechnya to America's civil war. And uh, he, uh, he support, heavily support uh, the war, uh, the war, uh, the Russian war in Chechnya which actually lasts for the past 300 years. Uh, Russia yes. tried to control this uh, Caucasian uh, region, and really for, this, for the past 300 years they killed enormous amounts, just literally slaughtered enormous amount of uh, completely innocent people. Yes, yes. Well, now well, let, let's let's get into the to the to the general uh, control of this region and what the goal is. My my research tells me that America America's economy is in tr very big trouble worldwide. We we, we have seen the uh, the complete uh, destruction of the American dollar. Uh, they they have gone from the largest creditor country in the world and and in 20 years become the largest debtor country in the world. We are on the verge of an economic collapse in the United States. The point being. Uh, the Russians, on the other hand, have been strengthened lately. They have been given uh, new money in their in their uh, in their treasury. They have been building new um, equipment for their military, uh, and so it seems like countries such as Iran are inviting the Russians into Iran. This is astonishing to me because here they are. Russia is thoroughly controlled at the top by Jewish interests, and the Iranians are inviting them into their country. They're they're inviting the Russians into Syria. My point is this: um, it won't take a, uh, a, an army of Russians to take over Iran. They'll already be invited. They won't have to attack. They'll be invited in. And uh, so it seems like they're making a fatal error here, um, because as you know, and I know, and many people know, uh, Zionist control of Russia is not a, a myth. It's a reality. And why would why would a country such as Iran invite Zionists into their country? Uh, and, and, and seemingly uh, in, in opposition to Israel. It seems like a big fraud, and it looks like within the next couple of years that whole region could be in the hands of, um, of Vladimir Putin. Well, uh, it's really quite difficult to say exactly what is going on in relation to uh, Russia and uh, Muslim countries, because uh, in reality Russia is a great enemy of Islam and they're fighting Islam. For example, it is really very easy to open the synagogue in any Russian town or city, but virtually it's impossible to open a mosque, and there was a still persecution of uh, Russian Muslims happened, uh, happened in Russia, and literally Russia killing, still killing, thousands of uh, Muslim all the Caucasian region, and on the other hand, they've got very good relations with, uh, with Iran, uh, and other seems to be Muslim countries. That, that's from my point of view as a Muslim. That's bizarre. That is extremely strange things. Yes. What is going on? I, yes. I, yes. I, I, it's very difficult to understand. For well, me this what is why is, I what... just made the statement, um, uh, Iskander. I, I made the statement that it seems to me the larger uh, goal here is for is for ultimately. I mean, Putin has done a good job in the public eye. As, as being a Christian, and he's, he, the, his countrymen are holding him up as a very popular leader. If you look at, at, at if you ask a, a, a Moscovite or you ask a, somebody from uh, Vladivostok or any place in, 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 in a large major city of Russia, uh, if Putin has done a good job, everybody uh, is, is almost to a man says, yes, 
We've yeah, nearly 90% support him, yeah. I would say so. Now, but, but, but m many people don't realize uh, under the surface there are other plans on the, uh, in the future that are going to change Russia's uh, life um, dramatically. Now, mm -hmm. I, I see this, I see this uh, as a fraud, and I see it as a, as a period of preparing for a, a new attack into the northern region of Iran as well as into I Iraq. Because America can't continue in Iraq. There's no more money to spend mm -hmm. uh, by the Americans. So what's going to happen when the American military can no longer hold um, um, Iraq and, and, the, and they have to walk away? What's going to happen when Afghanistan uh, erupts with the Taliban and uh, the, the Americans have no more money to uh, finance their military? Who's going to come in and fill up the vacuum, fill up the void? Of course, it will be Putin's forces. He has a full treasury. He has been saving tons of gold over the last three years. He's bought over a thousand tons of gold. This man putting mm -hmm. in his treasury. He is a debt. He is a creditor nation in in the world. He has a positive balance in his treasury. My point is this: as far back as I can look into history, the Russians have been receiving, even under the Soviet regime, the Americans were giving the Soviets. Uh, technology and, and cash through, throughout World War II, and it didn't end after World War II. The entire Cold War was a fraud. And, and there was high level of contact between people like Armand Hammer, a very prominent Zionist Jew, who would bring technology from New York into Moscow, and they were, they were sharing information and capital, and the Jewish bankers were giving money to Russia when they needed it. My point is this. What we've seen on the surface is, is a Cold War, but what was really going on was world domination of a single group, in my view. Well, as I said earlier, what's, uh, what the Jews do, and they create in two opposing groups, basically. So the majority of the population on this earth believe in the conflict, and they try to take any part of this conflict, basically, to make... To be to be busy and but in reality just the one group uh, um, who is in the control. For example, in Moscow uh, there is a really a lot thousands of Jews who is literally emigrating from Israel to Moscow. And in one of the interview uh, 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 in the Jewish newspaper, I don't remember who is this exactly. He said that we are trying to build the. You are, even Lushkov, the mayor of Moscow, said that we are trying to build a new Jerusalem uh, uh, in Moscow. They, I suppose, they try to replace the very bad image of, of Israel and, uh, and America in the world and replace, replace it with Russia, basically, with a new, refreshed image. But yep. Not, 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 not too many people know that this is the same, basically, the same tool yeah, run by the, by the Jews. Well, Ishkander, I have a question for you. I, I know recently uh, they announced, and Putin announced, the opening of, the, um, of the, his party. His, his political party is opening an office in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Uh, and so it's the first time uh, Russia has actually uh, entered Israel with some of its political movement. Uh, so basically what we see is this is not just clandestine anymore. They're actually starting to make moves uh, in the open, uh, showing that they work together. I mean, you know, what, what is Vladimir Putin's political party opening up offices in both Tel Aviv and Jerusalem? I mean, come on. Uh, and, and could you give the people a little idea of some of the, the, the men and women, some of their names of, of people behind Putin uh, that are running uh, things in Russia? Well, uh, this is really quite difficult to say because this is really hidden information. It is extremely difficult to say who is in reality uh, behind uh, behind Putin. And unfortunately, I can't tell you the the real names. But I think uh, that the all links goes back to to Israel. How about, how about the, the Chabad Lubavitch, the Chabad Lubavitch under Lazar, Lazar's Chabad Lubavitch uh, Association of Jewish Communities in Russia? And well, uh, Ben Lazar, uh, he was introduced to Russia 
uh, in the 90s uh, by the uh, head of the KGB. This is quite yes. interesting. This is quite interesting point. And uh, Ben Lazar, he's heavily supporting uh, President Bush. And And his um, elections, uh, and the year when Putin became to power, uh, Ben Lazar he made Ben Lazar uh, the chief rabbi uh, in Russia, yes. uh, ba basically. <laughs> and uh, this quite difficult. What links has uh, Ben Lazar? But definitely he is one of the behind person. And it's interesting point. He uh, said in one of his uh, interview that he is uh, uh, Putin's rabbi. That's right. Putin's rabbi, and Putin he's positioning himself as a as an Orthodox Christian. That's right. That's and the that's other the, that's the giveaway. Thing. See, that's the giveaway here. And and you can also hear about a man, a rabbi named Pincus Goldschmidt. And Pincus Goldschmidt was invited by Putin to come in and 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 an associate of what they call the the gay Gaidamek. The Gaidamek? Do you know the Gaidamek? Uh I have the surname, yes. The Gaidamek of Gaidamek and, and what we've got, of course you were right, Burial Lazar and uh the, the you see, I have turned this up by just doing some surface research and then I look deeper into it. What the world doesn't know, because no one reports it, <clears throat> is that this has been going on for some time. In fact, since 1917, Russia has not been independent of these forces, and uh, and the United States has been bought up since the since the, you know after the Civil War. So mm -hmm. both countries are actually in the hands of these people, under the under the control of the, the international banking cartel, which of course you know everyone seems to think. When I talk to you, I remember saying to you on a private call. Uh, I said, you know, the the, uh, the uh, oligarchs, somebody said to me in an email, the oligarchs uh, were kicked out of Russia by Putin, so he can't be friends with the, with the Zionists. And I said, wait a minute. Most of those oligarchs stole billions and walked out of the country with all their money. Mm -hmm. uh, I, if, I mean, if I got kicked out of a country with $14 billion, I'd say, okay, see you later. No big problem for me, but the fact is, most of those oligarchs are still welcome in Russia, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Only a few oh, yes, of them yes. have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the same idea of a creating and a conflict, creating as two fighting parties, basically, to make people busy, to believe, oh, this is a conflict, he's fighting Jews, but in reality, they're not, just, this is just a pure setup. That's right. And how can we get people to, put, to, to understand this? Uh, Iskander, you know, the fact is, it, unless we're able to explain this in a simplified form, because people can't uh, put their heads around complex issues for some reason. I don't know if it's because they're poisoning our water with fluoride or because people are too busy watching football on television. I don't know the reason, but the fact is most people don't want to look into things anymore. They, they want a, a simplified explanation of everything. And I'm trying my best to simplify this so people can understand it. Are there other things that point to the facts as we've seen them here? I mean, I know resource companies that have been going into Russia to exploit their timber, the wood, the, the gold mining, the oil. All of them are, all of them are backed by companies such as um, Harry Oppenheimer in the South Africa. People like, uh, like of, of course, uh, Mr. Rothschild's firms are in there in, in a lo large mass doing joint ventures. Um, companies like Exxon Mobil, the BP Amico. In other words, these these forces that we're talking about in the in the West are actually in Russia in very large uh, numbers, uh, exploiting large amounts of, of natural resources. Are they are they not? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Russia became integrated in the in the resources because they contain a great amount of uh, natural resources like an oil and metals and gas and obviously uh they they trying to use uh, Russia in this in this sense and it is quite quite interesting point that uh, according to one uh, sources that Putin he is one of the richest men on the world and Russia 
has enormous amount of, amount of, of, of money, but the general population, for example, if you take teacher uh, in the school, his salary is about $200 per month. That explains yep. quite a lot. Yes, and but but then again, you know, we've got we've got the the uh, treasury of Russia uh, filling up with with large amounts of money. Now, here's an interesting thing: they allowed after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1989, they allowed public um, social problems to er erupt. Now, here's one of the telling points: the Russians didn't have terrible drug problems in '89. They they had a, here and there. They had some problems with heroin from uh, Afghanistan, but. The major problem, social problem in Russia was alcohol. No, oh, yes, now, indeed. It, yes, now after 89, instead of tackling the social problem of alcohol, what did Yeltsin do? He reduced the price of vodka. Now, instead of making vodka um, 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 more difficult to acquire, he in fact lowered the price of it, causing much more serious social problems. We saw that the, the uh, life, life span of a man drop all the way to 46 years of age uh, in, in the 90s. Now, of course, that has been reversed, but the only, the only reason it's been reversed is so many uh, men uh, are, have died from, from the social uh, uh, sicknesses that they were participating in. So my point is this. What, what people have to understand is that the, these governments that we're discussing right now have not got the best interest of their public in their minds. Am I correct? Oh, yes, indeed, yes. And, for example, the Russian Orthodox Church, they are selling uh, alcohol and a tobacco and then don't pay a tax. They receive this license from the government. They're selling alcohol and tobacco, Russian Orthodox Church, and don't pay tax. And they've got incredible, enormous amount of income uh, from, that, uh, from that horrible uh, stuff, basically. And... Quite a lot, really a lot, Russian population are alcoholics, basically. You could, and I could talk about children who is nine, ten years old, they're drinking, they're sniffing the glue, and the problem with drugs is really enormous in Russia, and that started from perestroika in 1985. That's Before, right. just a few people knew what the heroin is, what the cocaine is, and now it is incredibly popular in, in youth culture. Yeah. Like the so West. alcohol and drugs, they're just basically destroying, destroying the, Russian, the Russian population. Well, but, and then you have to understand that, that, that the money coming from heroin sales is going into the hands of these uh, same Zionist criminals because they run the Afghanistan heroin trade, and they also get the cocaine out of South America. Mm -hmm. So the, they're, they're feeding off the sickness of, of the Russian population in the same way as they are from the inner cities in the United States, where, where drugs are readily available and people are falling victim uh, to that in, in the United States. The, the point being is that what we basically are is a harvest for these people. They, they're harvesting... Uh, uh, um, uh, human is sickness and and profiting from it, uh, Islanda. Is, this is something that I I can't imagine. Uh, uh, you, you know, the Orthodox Church in Russia is not complaining about the Jewish influence. So it oh no, not me. at all. That's a, that's another bizarre thing because before revolution in 1917, the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, telling that there was a prediction by the Russian saints, yeah, that's what happened, that the Jews will gain power uh, um, in Russia, and they will destroy basically everything. They received this information from the, uh, in the visions, basically, in spiritual visions, yeah, and that's exactly what's, what's happened, basically. Uh, what I told you uh, uh, early, that uh, the presidents and Russian other government members, they're positioning themselves as so they're Christians, basically, on the other hand, they openly participated in the ritual, Jewish ritual uh, practices. Well, now, I'm going to go on to some other things. We, we know about um, white slavery of, of women, and I remember in the 1990s an, a large number of Russian women were uh, fi finding their way into uh, prostitution rings. And you also saw the same kind of activity from the uh, Serbian region, from the, uh, from the uh, Balkans. Um, and we also see child uh, pornography and other things being run out of uh, the 
Eastern Bloc countries, and as well as Ukraine and other areas. These people are also involved in these kinds of sicknesses as well. Do you have any information on that? Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what I knew uh, that the market uh, for pornography in Russia it's enormous, and it is the I couldn't. It is incredible sickness. Um, what is, what is going on uh, there? It's a lot of perverts there. And uh, one of the uh, information uh, what I've got about uh, Ben Lazar, that uh, when he um, came from the uh, United States, he had a problem in the United States with the police uh, about the uh, pedophilia and child pornography. Yes. That's yes. the other alarming aspects of his uh, of his activity in Moscow, and I don't have much exactly information uh, about the people involved in government in such affairs. But you know that's that information is enough to think what is going on if Ben Lazar had a, a problems with the um, American police uh, with the child pornography and pedophilia. And he's still prominent in, in, in leadership role uh, in, the, in the Zionist Jewish community of Russia. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, Ben Lazar, yeah, he's um, uh, chief uh, Russian uh, rabbi. Uh, how about Lev Levin, Leveny? Lev Leveny from, uh, from Israel, uh, also working with Mr. Putin, uh, the richest man in Israel. Leveny. Yeah, Lev mm -hmm. Leveny. Yeah, yeah. He, he, you, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's astonishing. I, I, do, um, I do need to ask my engineer uh, if mm -hmm. we can take a two-minute break uh, at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've uh, got to um, take a moment for myself here and uh, rush back to everybody if that's possible. Uh, can I get uh, Bashir uh, to hold the line for a moment? This is CII. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that uh, moment. Uh, I've been sitting at my desk here drinking lots of tea, and um, you know, that's what happens when you drink lots of tea. Uh, Ishlanda, I'm so sorry I had to run away and, uh, and, and take a moment for myself, but you know, we're back here. Look, uh -huh. I, I, I want to bring up a couple of more points before we finish this, uh, this discussion here. And I see that the world's economies are in very bad condition. I see the Middle East on the verge of a um, staged conflict. I see uh, the, the Israeli component uh, posturing about Iran. And uh, I see the Americans saying they're going to support Iran. And I see the Syrians saying we've got this and that. And I'm, I'm even reading in many of the alternative press uh, places that, oh, it's, you know, Putin is going to save the Iranians and this and that. So much lying, so much nonsense, but I, I have to tell you, I fear we are on the verge of a terrible period of, 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 of catastrophes all over the place. And I'm wondering if you see the same problems, and what is your, uh, what is your opinion on, these, uh, on what I just said to you? Well, you're meaning that uh, the world is facing the major financial crisis. Well, it's not just a financial crisis, but they're, they're, it looks like they're trying to set up a, 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 a staged war in the Middle East to make everybody, uh, you know, it looks like they're trying to get World War III going to me. Well, uh, my point of view, to be honest, is uh, religious. As a Muslim, I, I saw this as a conflict uh, before, before appearing uh, what in uh, an Islamic tradition uh, called Michel Dajjal or in a Christian um, Antichrist. So the whole conflict or the whole world problem, problems, uh, the whole point is they preparing the world to receive uh, Michel Dajjal, the false messiah, basically. But uh, if we're talking just uh, on the political um, aspects of what is going on, I suppose uh, that the media try to try to uh, frighten the population 
uh, on the one hand, uh, and try to uh, establish the fear in the uh, the fear. On the other hand, they are bombarding the population with the uh, fun, with the comedy, with the horror films, with the uh, alcohol, uh, with the music, with the drugs. They try to hypnotize uh, the whole population uh, with fear and with uh, with idea of fun, uh, idea of entertainment. That's yep. one. Uh, that's their main uh, tools and the main mechanic of uh, their control. That's my opinion. That's what I uh, what I see in the contemporary. Well, how many event. how many people, in your view, are aware or becoming aware now? I mentioned to you privately when we were talking uh, early on when I was starting my battle against these people, um, Zionism on the Internet, if you put it in, in a Google search engine, there was only 1,700 examples when you typed in Zionism. Today there's al almost 8 million. My point is this, the world is waking up to what Zionism is about, which it's, it is a criminal doctrine. Uh, run by criminal uh, human beings trying to destroy the rest of us. Um, but more and more people are aware of it. Do you see an awakening happening around the world of the facts that we've been discussing? Oh, definitely, definitely, yes. But I think it is not enough. I think what what we need, we have to penetrate the the media. We have to penetrate the all type of the information sources to deliver this message. I think we have used the music. We have used any type of the uh, media sources to deliver this message. That's incredibly important in the contemporary in the contemporary situation well so uh, I would say uh, I would advise any people who got links to the media uh, they have to think about how to to put this information how to 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 make people aware of what is going on uh, in in the reality well, you're exactly right, and this has been my battle from the beginning, and of course, uh, South African regulators don't want me telling this story, uh, and of course, you, you, you can understand why, because this really threatens the, their, whole, uh, their whole criminal operation. Uh, however, it, it is so important that people understand, I'm not against Jews, I'm against criminals. Oh, yes, and there's a of big, course. There's a big difference between a, a Jewish person and a criminal, what I've discovered in, uh, over time is the Jewish community that go to work every day and sit at a desk or do the, they support this criminal gang because they're, they, they have been lied to like everyone else. They're believing the propaganda that's put on TV. What I'm hoping to do is to inform Zion, the, the Jews about Zionism so that the Jew, Jewish people themselves can turn on their own leadership. Because if the Jews themselves turn on this leadership, we have a chance to defeat them. What do you think? Oh, yeah, this is a very important. That's the key, I think, key aspect uh, uh, in, this, in this battle. Uh, because quite a lot of Jews they have been brainwashed by the idea of a Holocaust, by the idea of a pogroms. And the reality is such a thing, uh, such a thing happened. And this is uh, the, the, the Zionists use it as a tool to brainwash their own people. To feel their victim, they have to unite uh, over uh, Israel, basically. So, right. but on the other hand, there are more and more Jewish people who became aware of what is going on. For example, many years ago, one of the Jew who told me, who opened, I would say, my eyes on the reality of Zionism, on the reality of Israel, and it says, I would say, thank you for 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 this. Yes, well, it's, you know, my most powerful ally in this fight has been a man named Benjamin Friedman. He did a, he did a, 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 a talk in 1960 about what was going on, and were it not for this gentleman, uh, who actually left the Jewish religion and became a Christian because of what he saw his own community doing, but he told the truth about this. And this man was present during the signing of the Versailles Treaty in World War I. He saw these people actually committing the crimes and he told on them and this kind of bravery coming from people like Friedman like your friend like so many others this is going to be the key to taking these people out to stopping them 
Because if they lose their own home support, if they lose the support of their own community, they cannot any longer function the way they have been. It, it, it will take away their whole power base, in my view. What I believe the other thing is that the persecution of the Jewish people during the Second World War was, agonized, was organized by, by Zionists. And That's right. The, and they trying to to uh, to <clears throat> uh, to to clean what this is purely my opinion. They try to clean the uh, Jewish uh, race from the just normal um, normal people, basically. And well, they wanted to they, get rid of their opposition, um, Iskander. They wanted to see. Not everybody in World War Two wanted to leave Germany and go to Palestine. And oh, so yes, people, indeed, yes. Well, the ones that didn't want to go, they ended up working in IB Farben factories building bombs. Mm -hmm. Or they worked in, in work camps, or they were, they were sent in holding camps, because they, they were the opposition to Zionists, and they, they had to be done away with. You, do you understand my point? Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes, of course. That was thinking about, I didn't receive any uh, information about this. It was my intuition, yeah, that the, the persecution of the Jewish people during the Second World War was organized uh, by, by Zionists. And uh, the second goal is to create the atmosphere of fear, to create the atmosphere uh, that the Jewish people have to go to, to, to Israel, basically, to occupied land of uh, Palestine. Well, we know uh, today the, the, the group, the, the, the country that is committing uh, apartheid at a level unseen in the, in, in the world in, 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 in generations, if not ever, is Israel itself. Of course, you know, you, if you go to Israel, you immediately are aware of the fact that uh, there is a hierarchy of control there and that if you are not uh, Jewish in that, in that country, you are less than nothing. Uh, and that's how they feel about the Palestinians. These people on their own land have been turned into... Uh, to cattle in the mm, eyes of mm. the Zionists, and uh, this is a terrible uh, uh, state of affairs. And you know, to bring this kind of subject up during Ramadan, I want to bring up this final point here before we end up our, our end our interview. <clears throat> it's, it's, Ramadan is a period of peace, as far as my understanding of Islam goes. But it, peace, at, at not at all cost. Peace is something that that must be uh, earned. You, you can't, peace is not automatic in this world. There are evil, uh, criminal people in our world. And if you want peace on this earth, you have to be able to put your effort into stopping evil. So what we need to do, I think, for, for people celebrating Ramadan this, this month, this period, they need to take an active role in informing other people about the crimes of this group so that we can begin informing the rest of humanity about these criminals. And Ramadan's a good period to do that, I believe, because people are coming together and speaking with each other during their, during their, their um, celebrations in the evening. And I think it should be taken advantage of uh, by every uh, person celebrating to tell others about these facts. How do you feel about that? Uh, yes, yes, I think that's right. You're, you're right. And uh, peace uh, in Islam doesn't mean... Uh, <clears throat> Not to act. Uh, I like uh, 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 one of the uh, saying by uh, by the uh, Muslim uh, uh, Muslim uh, poet um, Jalaladin uh, Jalaladin um, Rumi uh, about uh, about. Uh, uh, a, a, a jihad about the uh, the the holy war. Uh, I try to to can 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 find it. I don't remember by heart. Uh, uh, but anyway, the idea is uh, that it is important to take uh, the spear uh, from the mad uh, people. Uh, and the spear, the only way to take the spear from the mad people is uh, through the, the holy war, it's through the doing something, it's through the fighting the evil. So that's the, the very important uh, part of the, of the Muslim faith. Uh, 
to to struggle and if you see the evil you have to stop them with your hands or with your words so this is a uh, important uh, part of the uh, muslim religion obviously well i uh, i have advocated doing it with words because if we were to do anything other than words uh, they would use that as an excuse to stop us from telling this story you see this message needs to go farther out into society, and immediately when violence uh, erupts, uh, it's going to be a complete qu uh, uh, crushing of this message. So what I've tried to do is to, to tell people who, who are following my message to let's do this peacefully if we are at all possible to do. We must spread this word and, 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 and not advocate violence because violence will get us uh, uh, attacked physically. Now, we may be physically attacked anyway uh, because of what we're doing. However, uh, it is still my responsibility to try and stop the violence and, and, and continue the education process because I, I think the only f hope we have to, to, to defeat the evil is through education. And that requires people to turn away from football, to turn away from, from, from the, the things you described earlier, you know, all of these diversions, these these uh, nightclubs and the rest of it, and start paying attention to the world around them and start listening to the facts as they've been discovered so that we can unite together. You see, I, I, am, I am not from the Muslim faith, but I am somebody who has come uh, before everybody to try and unite people. This is about bringing people of goodwill uh, together in the world from all groups, from all walks of life, so we can all together turn on these criminal, evil people and stop them. And I, I, it's possible. I believe, remember what I said to you yesterday, uh, Ishkander, I said to you, uh, all good ideas started with one person. Well, mm, yes, yes. We are, we are far bigger than just one person today, and we are growing in numbers, and we must continue the growth of this message worldwide. And uh, that is my hope. That, that truly is. Do you have a last statement you'd like to make to the listeners? Uh, well, um, uh, the last uh, message uh, in this program is uh, you have to think, you have to avoid at any cost uh, the the contemporary uh, culture which is infiltrating uh, your minds, infiltrating your heart and stay with, uh, with Allah and study the, the way of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, trust, trust, uh, trust in Allah and learn, learn through the history uh, of, of Islam, the relations, uh, <clears throat> the relations and, uh, between the Muslim and the world, and particularly the uh, Jewish people, and uh, to use your heart uh, in all relations, uh, and use your, your, use your mind and spread the word of uh, wisdom and spread the word of uh, knowledge what is going on if you possess this wisdom and if you, if you possess this knowledge well i'm very gr grateful to you um, my friend ishlander and uh, uh, alexander to me uh, in our conversations it was been it's been a wonderful uh, one hour discussion we've had today and you've enlightened me in many ways i I told you not to share a lot of that information you had with me uh, before the show, so I would, uh, I would be as surprised as the listeners, and I have been. It, it, was, mm -hmm. it was everything I thought it would be. Look, um, ladies and gentlemen, the French Connection does not uh, get paid to do this. I have been doing this as a benevol, as a free of charge. Uh, I have always uh, been, um, I've never been paid to do this work. Um, it's because I care about hu the human family, and I want to share my hopes for the future with everyone in South Africa, Pan-Africa, Europe, and America. And I, I, have, uh, I have financial needs to keep this uh, message going. If any of you have a uh, generosity uh, that you would like to help me to keep this message going, please find a way to, uh, to, uh, to do that because it is so important that I keep going and it's so important that everyone who is learning about this can continue to learn from the French Connection and I am the witness.com. 
Uh, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Daryl Bradford Smith telling each and every one of you to be well uh, and have a great holiday period uh, for all of you in the Islamic faith. And for the rest of you, uh, be well. Bye-bye now. Contact Rapid now on 0800-516-1220.